There is a huge increase in the global demand for batteries, especially for lithium ion batteries. This is forecasted and several reasons um, are behind because we have the transformation in the mobility sector and the subsequent electrification of passenger transport, but also commercial vehicles. And this drastically increases the demand for lithium ion batteries and the higher share of renewables, which are subject to fluctuations, um, require energy storage devices, such as batteries. And batteries are also used in everyday consumer electronics, such as smartphones or notebooks, and this further increases the demand for batteries. Therefore, it is very important to assess, but also allocate potential environmental impacts which are associated with batteries. And it is also important to identify opportunities for improvement. And for this, we use life cycle assessment, Life cycle assessment or LCA is a standardized method and it enables the quantification and allocation of potential environmental impact of products, processes and services. And it considers the whole life cycle. So it starts from raw material acquisition and goes to the end of life phase. And to do a, a, an LCA, we need to quantify all the resources entering but also leaving a system. And this data is called lifecycle inventory or LCI, which consists of the material and energy flows of our system. And with our screening, we wanted to identify these data gaps that are currently existing in lifecycle assessment studies for the production of lithium ion battery cells. Yes, so this is really important to allocate their sustainability. Our goal was to ident identify data gaps, which are currently existing in life cycle assessment studies in the literature for cell production, but also battery pack production, but also to fill these gaps with our own LCA. So what our target was um, to focus on the production of this battery cells and battery packs, um, not the end of life phase or the use phase. And our work consists of two parts, and the first part was the screening. And for that, we searched for current literature, but also older literature, if we considered it as valuable. And we choose life cycle assessment studies, material and energy flow analysis, life cycle costings, and life cycle inventories. And then we classified the content of these studies into several categories, which we considered also important for life cycle assessment of batteries. And these um, categories were the study type. Um, we analyzed if the study considered a cell or a pack. We analyzed the cell geometry, so if it's cylindrical, pouch, or prismatic. We analyzed which cell chemistry was used, so if um, for the anode and for the cathode, for example, NMC111. We analyze the data sources for the energy flows, the material flows, and what we consider as background processes. Background processes are, for, for example, solvents that are used. We also um, investigated the method used um, to model the energy flows, so if it's top-down or bottom-up. We investigated the data type, if it's primary or secondary data. And then lastly, we investigated the production scales and volume. And whenever necessary, we contacted the corresponding authors um, in order to clarify the classification. And at the end, we ended up analyzing a total of 63 studies, which should enable us the identification of data gaps. In some studies, um, it was very difficult um, to classify the data because the um, life cycle inventories are interconnected and they depend on each other because only a few studies reveal fully close, uh, disclosed primary data and the majority of the studies rely on these few studies and this leads into a messy picture of interconnections and this hampers the traceability of the data. Overall, um, there was a problem in identifying the production scale because for 25% of the studies analyzed, the production scale remained unknown. And the majority of the um, analyzed studies um, reveal 
data or results for industrial scale production and only five results on lab scale are available. And only 18 out of the 63 studies revealed the production volume, but this information is very crucial for interpreting the results of a life cycle assessment because the production scale has a significant influence on the environmental profile. We illustrated this um, because we plotted the energy requirements for cell production in a figure where you can see the energy, the cell production energy for each production volume. And there you can see that the energy required to produce a battery on lab scale is much, much higher than the energy you would need to produce a pilot scale um, lithium ion battery cell or even an industrial scale lithium ion cell. That's because the um, laboratory processes are um, not so efficient. You don't have heat recovery and you have lower throughputs and the overall energy requirements are much higher. And therefore also the environmental profile for lab scale um, processes and lab scale uh, batteries are much higher compared to the ones on industrial or pilot scale. So based on the data gaps that we identified, which are lack of primary data, lack of transparency, and lack of data on lab scale, we conduct our, our own LCA. For that, we, um, con uh, we conducted measurements on the KIT20 pouch cell at lab scale. We made in-house measurements. We collected the energy consumption with measuring devices, and we also weighed the materials. We considered the spatial environment, such as the dry room. And we considered all relevant processes which are necessary to produce a battery cell, such as a coating process or calendaring. And what we did was to provide all inventory data fully transparent so that everyone else can use it and replicate it or do more investigations on our data. And we also use the bottom-up approach to model our data. So it is also possible to just use one specific process or the data for one specific process. And it's also possible to identify hotspot processes, so processes which have a very high environmental burden in the production of battery cell. We considered four main categories for a life cycle assessment, which are acidification, climate change, um, mineral resource depletion, and particulate matter. And what we figured out is that the hotspots in our baseline analysis, which are the cathode slurry, the anode current collector, in our case copper, the energy requirement for coating and drying, and for the dry room, are in line with those in the literature. But our overall results are much, much higher compared to the one in literature, um, which is because we use a lab scale manufacturing process. And as I mentioned, the low utilization rate and uh, small production volumes, they lead into higher specific energy requirements. And we also have lower material efficiencies. So in our specific case, we had very high material loss rates for the production um, of the electrode for, um, because we had high loss rates for the slurry and the current collectors. And we had very low uh, product throughput in the dry room, which lead to less cells among which we can distribute the dry room energy. But we conducted sensitivity analysis also to address uncertainties. And we also wanted to analyze potential effects of scaling up the production to a pilot scale. And as expected, we could see that the increase in throughput of the cells in the dry room, but also the reduction of the loss rates would lead into um, the reduction, drastic reduction of the environmental profile. And we even um, could see a six-fold difference in the climate change for our lab-scale production um, compared to the upscale to pilot-scale battery pack production. Yes, so the results showed that the, um, the production scale and the production throughput or volume has a massive impact on the environmental profile of battery produced. Most lithium batteries are currently often available on laboratory scale. And our results showed that it is possible to reliably identify environmental hotspots already in a lab scale using lab scale data, which is really useful. 
And we can also transfer the data which we got for this lithium ion battery cell also to sodium ion batteries because they use similar production methods or they're produced in a similar way. In addition, you can use this lab scale data to retrospectively determine the impacts that production skills have on the environmental footprint of batteries. So you could try to investigate scale-up techniques and th scale-up methods or factors um, to reliably or to mimicate higher production scales. And with this, we can anticipate the environmental impacts of post-lithium batteries better.